So the endosymbiotic theory um, tries to explain um, how we got some of the more complex cells. Um, it's basically trying to say that some of the organelles in today's animal and plant cells, those are our more complex cells, were once independently living bacteria. So if we look back about 3.8 billion years ago, um, there's some fossil record um, evidence that suggests that uh, we had anaerobic bacteria. In other words, these bacteria did not use oxygen. It's a very simple form of bacteria. So then when we look at the fossil record again, it shows that about 3.2 billion years ago, we see the um, evolving of photosynthetic bacteria and bacteria that do photosynthesis are now going to produce oxygen and release that oxygen gas into the atmosphere. So now that we see all of this oxygen gas coming into the atmosphere, that necessarily isn't very good for our anaerobic bacteria. So they do not like this. So if we go back to the passage, they're saying, all right, so this oxygen that was released as a byproduct is accumulating in the atmosphere. Believe it or not, it's pretty toxic to the cells, even to our, our, to our cells. So now our anaerobic cells are at this disadvantage now that there's lots of oxygen in the atmosphere. And they start to die out as the oxygen levels increase. So now they propose through natural selection that our anaerobic bacteria are no longer suited for the environment. They're not going to reproduce and pass on their genetic code and the way that they make energy. Now aerobic cells now begin to show up shortly after that, so about 2.5 billion years ago. These types of cells are able to use oxygen and they convert it into ATP and water. Our cells are aerobic cells. So it's now organisms that thrive in an oxygen containing atmosphere are now better suited to the environment. So now when you look at our picture, now we've got the orange, which is showing these are our aerobic cells. They can use the oxygen that's in the atmosphere, so now they are better suited to the environment. So what could be one way that our anaerobic bacteria over here that could survive in a very oxygen-rich atmosphere? Well, what if that bacteria ingested one of the photosynthetic bacteria? Or what if it ingested one of the anaerobic bacteria? So now if it ingested one of the aerobic bacterial cells, now it could use the oxygen and thrive in this environment. So that's what this theory is basically suggesting, that our large aerobic bacteria that would die otherwise were now consuming the other types of bacteria, specifically the aerobic ones. Um, and here's what you get as results. If the bacteria are ingesting photosynthetic bacteria, then that's where the chloroplasts are evolving from. And then if you've got um, bacteria who are ingesting mitochondria, or sorry, ingesting aerobic bacteria, this is where you're getting mitochondria. Because if you remember, aerobic cells are converting oxygen into ATP. And that's what your mitochondria is responsible for doing. It basically takes the oxygen that you breathe in and it converts that oxygen and sugar into ATP. So let's take a look at this table down here. And if you look at just the prokaryotes, so these are our bacterial cells that we're taking a look at, they're pretty small, okay, about 1 to 10 microns. Eukaryotic cells, these are our more complex cells, um, these are much, much larger. If you look at the mitochondria inside the eukaryotic cell, huh, you'll notice that it's a very similar size to the size of a prokaryote. And then if you look at the same thing, chloroplasts, those are also very similar in size to um, the size of a prokaryote. So just another piece of information to say, perhaps our more complex cells and all of our organelles came from other cells ingesting the other types of cells. Now it says this arrangement is mutually beneficial for both of the cells. So in other words, both of them kind of survive in a sense. Um, hence they call this the endosymbiotic. So endo means into symbiosis. They're both mutually benefiting from this.